I am going to get us started then. Um, first of all, I would like to welcome everyone who is joining us here to see the 401 final presentations. Um, this class has worked incredibly hard to get to where they have been. Um, going through 401, as cheesy as it sounds, is kind of like going through a journey together. And one of the things that this class figured out early on was that they needed each other. And, um, and I've seen such great cooperation with this class, starting from day one, really, where they have supported each other and helped each other get through this. And, um, and it's really exciting to be here at the end when all of their hard work pays off and we get to see these incredible projects. So um, I hope you stick around all the way to the end. Um, just a reminder that we can't hear you talk, but if you wanna ask questions, there's a Q&A button that you can press. Um, also, when you are chatting, please make sure that you're chatting to everybody, not just the panelists, so that we can all um, share in the conversation there as well. Um, all right, so up first, we have the pills. Is that right? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Take it away. Okay. Dear family and friends, instructors and staff, students and supporters, on behalf of my team, PILS, and my entire cohort of intrepid pivoters and newly minted software developers, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. It is my pleasure to introduce you to PillPal, the app you didn't know you needed for the pills you always forget to take. The project that we've built was construed as a quintessential application of technology to make a quotidian activity more effective and more efficient. We made a mobile app to track the taking of medications because remembering which meds to take when or which meds you've already taken isn't always easy or straightforward because skipping a day or taking a medication too often can be dangerous and because the ability to note symptoms daily when taking medications can translate into better adjustments. But before we pop that pill, let's meet the team. Hi, I'm Ashley. I'm a full stack JavaScript de developer and I have a degree in nutrition. I spent 10 years as a chef while building my skills as an artist. And as someone who strives to push myself in all aspects of my life, I find pleasure in endurance sports like cycling, distance running, and hiking. More recently, I spent time in the health and wellness industry as a customer service administrator and sales agent. In this role, I taught myself how to use a newly implemented e-commerce platform to optimize efficiency and create opportunities for myself to grow in my role. While testing our development site and communicating bugs and new feature implementation to an external web development team, I grew a fascination for wanting to know more about what was going on behind the scenes, how the software was built, and how it functioned. So I pursued my curiosity. I found, uh, I found a passion for coding when I realized the similarities between my creative processes and creating and writing software. I believe that we all have a duty to contribute to maintaining and improving society. Technology has given us exponential opportunities to create rapid engagement and growth necessary to do that. Tech has solved so many of the world's problems through automation, making connecting easier and providing tools that give a voice to anyone anywhere, allowing more people to put their individual or group message and vision out into the world. I want to seek out opportunities that provide endless challenges and continuous learning and give back to the community. I hope to find a team that shares my vision and mission. Hi, I'm Dina Ayub. I'm a software development engineer. I started my career in tech over 15 years ago as a developer after graduating from university with a bachelor's degree in computer science. I founded and sold two companies before joining Microsoft as a PM in 2008. And I earned my MBA from the University of Washington in 2014 while working full time. I enjoy a vari wide variety of creative pursuits. I'm an artist painting in oils and acrylics, and I have written two fantasy novels. I also created an Android app called Injection Tracker to help people with diabetes, multiple sclerosis, and other conditions keep track of their self-injections, and it helps over 3,000 people every month. The thread that, uh, that ties all of my diverse experiences together is my creativity and passion for making people's lives better. I love problem solving, and in my spare time, I play video games and solve Mensa puzzles. I am courageous and foster radical candor with my team, building mutually genuine relationships so that we can work hard together to exceed our goals. 
I work best when I have autonomy and time for introspection and deep thinking, and I take mental ownership of any project I take on and feel responsible for its results. I work to understand the challenge deeply, evaluate the options, and formulate a plan with the team to find the best path forward. I then execute fully to see the project through to completion. I bring perspective, high standards, and a strong foundation to contribute to building the best product possible. This makes me a safe pair of hands for a difficult problem. Hi, my name is Nathan, and I'm a full stack software developer. With a master's degree in English and a professor, professional fluency in Russian, I thought that languages were my thing. But learning to code has been one of the hardest things I've done. My dad taught me that hard work lies at the pace of every solid achievement. And so I know that he'd be proud of this accomplishment, of graduating Code Fellows today, as well as this decision to pivot into tech and the hard work that's gone into it. Before, before the pivot, I sent thousands of people as a tour specialist to hard to get places like Central Asia, the South Caucasus, and Iran and served as the resident director for hundreds of students and teachers of Russian in St. Petersburg. In both of these roles, I was on the front lines of diplomacy, introducing young and old alike to new places, new people, new languages and cultures and diverse ways of life. In these roles, I made the exotic accessible and the foreign familiar, while giving the concept of home and a hearth a deeper and more tangible meaning. I've invested in this pivot to tech because I'm in awe of how technology makes the exotic familiar by connecting the world in ever more elegant and accessible ways. I look forward to putting my new skills and the full force of my work experience and education into continuing my career of connecting people and building community. Now let's meet the app and what better place to start with an app about pills than in the guts. We set out to build an easy to use med tracker, choosing to design it on a mobile platform for two reasons. One, to facilitate the use of the tracker, given that a pill is best tracked as soon as it is taken. And two, to make the app easily accessible, mobile devices being preponderant in the world. As our target features and target audience led us to mobile, so mobile led us to the technologies we opted to use to build PillPal. We chose to write our application using React Native as our main JavaScript framework, because it's relatively well supported and allows for deployment on multiple platforms using the same code base. We used React Redux to manage and pass our state, React Native Paper as our styling library, Node.js for our runtime environment, Expo is our development environment, MongoDB for our database, Axios to maintain and return our API calls, Heroku to deploy our API server that we built with our bare hands, and GitHub for code base management and collaboration. Dina, you're muted. Thank you. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the React components. We started out with the usual suspects and added components as needed. For example, when our quest to make something similar to a browser router failed, we created a main component, which we wrote from scratch, that does all of the routing logic to show and hide our pages. To manage state, we created four reducers, as you can see here. And just to point out a couple of uh, the cooler things we did with them, we used async storage to save and retrieve the user's token and user ID locally so that they wouldn't have to sign in every time that they open the app. And we created the back button functionality using a navigation stack. We also used a Mongo database for this, uh, even though we intended to use a SQL database at first. Uh, but now we have three collections, one for users, one for medication history, and one for medications. These are all connected to an authenticated API that we recreated from an old lab we built and then modified and deployed on Heroku. And now for the fun part. Welcome one and all to PillPal, your new best friend. Let's first follow the standard path of a user new to the app and sign ourselves in with an account. As a username, let's try Alina E, camel case, of course, with a password of, nice try, no divulging of passwords today. And let's let Ina's, Lena's email be lenak at socool.school.com. Go ahead and click sign up for me when you're finished typing that out. Our password will be stored encrypted in our database and the API will return a token that is stored locally to make it easier for the user to sign in securely and not have to input their credentials every time. Okay, we are in. 
When users first sign up, they'll obviously need to start by adding their medication. So the app knows to take them immediately to the corresponding page, the user's medicine cabinet. Let's add our first medication. Uh, while Codefellows has made us tough, there's no harm in being tougher. So let's add tougher to as our first medication. 15 milligrams a day should do it. Uh, frequency will be daily, since that's how often we have to work on coding. Uh, we'll take it in the evening when coders are most prone to the gremlins that haunt us. And we can make a note if we like um, about the uh, about the med or anything um, that we want is the best compass. Then we will uh, click save and watch the magic happen. Um, uh, what code, uh, let's see. Um, the newly added medication is entered into a list of medications uh, and a convenient modal appears asking us whether we'd like to add another medication or start taking them. Let's add one more medication to help us sleep without dreaming of code. Uh, we'll call this one uh, code free zone. Uh, we'll take 100 milligrams um, as needed at night. Uh, and another note. And we are ready to uh, look at some of the other features of the app. Once you've added all the medications, you proceed to take to the take medication page, uh, which allows you to tell the app which medications you've taken and when. This is the main page the user will interact with to track their meds. To better demonstrate the breadth of features in our app, let's sign out this user and sign in with an existing user. Yes, Mr. Neil rocks. As you see, it takes us directly to the take uh, medication page uh, with a list of the medications that we've previously added. It's easy to mark several pills at a time, so you don't need to add them individually. You can just check them. There are date and time pickers at the top that default to the current time, uh, but you can change those fields if, for example, you're logging medication you took at an earlier time. You can also add notes. You can also add notes to the record to indicate any number of things, uh, including why you took the pill or what side effects you had. Now let's click on save and the app takes you to the medication history page. Here you can view your full history since tracking began. You can see the list of meds you've taken grouped by day uh, at a glance, it's just like right there. Uh, you also have another option for viewing the medications you've taken one by one in reverse chronological order by clicking display all. A couple of really cool things we added here um, that we're very proud of are the drug profile and drug history. Now let's take a look at the drug, is this the one the, oh yeah, this one is filtering by a specific drug. So you can see your history for just that specific medication. We can go back to history and click on the drug profile for Lyrica, and this will show us all the information we entered when we added that medication. Uh, you can easily navigate among the pages of the app by clicking on ellipses in the nav bar. Uh, let's show you one of the features we're most proud of. Um, once a user has signed in, the app saves a unique encrypted token in the phone's local storage. This token allows the user to close the app and reopen it without having to sign back in. We'll demonstrate that here by reloading the simulator. The app knows that the user isn't new and automatically displays the take medication page again with its list of meds to choose from. PillPal is awaiting approval for release on the Google Play Store and will also be published in the near future on the uh, App Store. Now we'd like to talk about some of the challenges that we faced because on our four day sprint from zero to full, to full stack mobile app, it did not come without its hurdles. We spent about six hours debugging async storage, which would allow us to persist user permissions. What a relief when we were finally able to utilize this authorization feature. We went through three date and time picker libraries before we were able to implement one that works. So don't, don't get discouraged by disappointments. There's a solution out there. You just have to keep looking. As mentioned before, our app was built with React Native. And I'm mentioning this again because we were very briefly introduced to React Native. And by briefly, I mean we had one day of instruction and implementation. So we built a fully functional, practical, and deployable application in four days, employing technologies that we had to learn while using them. 
Lastly, after a few hours of struggle, we were unable to implement a library for page routing. So we had to build the equivalent of a browser router from scratch. Uh, we had a large list of stretch goals when we began, knowing that many of them would not be feasible in four days, but we were pleasantly surprised at how much we were able to accomplish. We implemented the back button, the ability to filter medication history by the medication, grouping the medication history by date, the date and time pickers, and sign out among other things. Some of the big ticket items we didn't get to include are showing the medications to take by time of day that you're supposed to take them and implementing reminders in the app. My team and I are very proud of the app we built, not only for its utility, but also for its grace. While seem seemingly simple, this app is both immediately accessible, easy to navigate and use, and thoroughly practical. We're especially proud of the fact that a user's information is protected by basic and bare authorization and encryption, that the app utilizes local storage to provide its user with the convenience of session persistence, and that this full stack multi-feature app was built and deployed in four days by a team of three. Of course, we couldn't have done any of this without the patience and expertise of our instructor, Lena Ivey, our grading tutor, Adrian Hubner, our class tutors, Bray and Christian, and all the tutors who saved us late at night throughout the course. We're also grateful for the organization and, in and infrastructure provided by Codefellows and its staff. For our fellow students in whom we found both colleagues and friends, and our families and friends who've not seen us for a couple of months straight now. Lastly, we thank all of you for your attention and welcome any questions that you may have. Looks like we, we do already have a question and that would be, are there any security concerns with not needing to sign back in? Um, I think there are definitely um, security concerns uh, with that in terms of like if, you're, uh, if you leave your phone unlocked, um, I think one option going forward would be to uh, implement um, some kind of verification first. So for example, when you have a banking app and you try to open it on your phone, they ask you for like face, uh, face authorization if you have an iPhone or the fingerprint um, on Android. So adding something like that would increase that, um, would improve that. Do we have any other questions that weren't mentioned in the Q&A or the chat? Oh, it looks like there's, now there's some in the Q&A. So um, what key aspect of your work would you most like to highlight in a job interview? <laughs> I would probably, um, uh, maybe as cheesy as it sounds, pick group dynamics. Uh, we started out strong uh, working together. Uh, um, figuring out how we wanted to work, what our main goals were, um, and how we would support each other, and we stuck to that. Uh, so, so that our very intense four days was fun, um, and you know you can't teach that kind of stuff. Looks like there is also a question from Robin. Uh, this looks like a well thought out project. Is there anything you wanted to add, but were not able to? Oh, I wanted to add everything. <laughs> All of the stretch goals. <laughs> there was a lot of things we wanted to add, but weren't able to. We had to just like figure out what could we accomplish in the amount of time that we were given. <laughs> we think this app uh, has, has um, immediate application. Um, for for use uh, and so we're we're interested in continuing to work on it um, we're looking to in the immediate future to um, to add the ability to edit uh, uh, the uh, the drug so if your prescription changes for example um, and to delete it if you no longer need it um, and that's just among a, a couple of things that we that we really want to, to, to add to it There is one last question. What do you know now that you wish you knew when you started development? Ooh, to, that async storage is really difficult to make work and to not spend six, six hours on it, but maybe just rebuild the project. <laughs> we had to um, start sort of in the middle of our project, we had to recreate the project and then copy some of our code over uh, to make async storage work because we spent a good six hours on it. Definitely. Uh, I would add to that three heads are better than one. Uh, and then if we count all the tutors and Lena who helped us throughout uh, the week, um, seven heads are better than one. 
<laughs> I think that's all the, all the time I have. Thank you so much. Excellent job, y'all. Um, let's give a hand to the pills. Um, really, really nice work. Um, not setting the bar quite high. Um, let's see here. Next up, should have done this beforehand. Um, we have, who did I say was next? Sorry, y'all. Um, oh, we have the pickup posse. Awesome. So this is another real world one that solves a great um, problem. So I'm going to turn it over to the pickup posse.